<laughs> Welcome back to Open Line. We are here with John Naven of John Naven and Associates getting schooled on 401ks today and how to make the most of it and make it work for you. If you would like a portfolio stress test, just give John a call. John, how's this work? The portfolio stress test uh, in conjunction with almost like a 401k review, what we'll do is we'll take a look at your whole portfolio. And we stress tested uh, not only for uh, fees or how the market, what's going to happen if the market does like it did in 2008 mm -hmm. where it corrects as bad as it was and down 38 percent. It'll show us everything about how your portfolio is working from the fee structure to the, the risk that you're taking to how your investments are working compared with the ones that are available on the street. Then you have good information in which you can step yes. back and go, okay, now I can make an educated decision. Right. Um, the biggest thing we see with that after visiting with hundreds of people doing the stress test is it is totally educational. There is no pitch. You're going to come in. You're going to sit down. We're going to look at your portfolio. We're going to give you the information of how it's performing. If you choose to go to the next step, that's up to you. If you want to do something differently, that's up to you. So it's very, very non-threatening, easy, and comfortable. And you're going to explain it to me just like we do here on the show, that it's this is not my full-time job being a yes. financial advisor. I yeah. don't want to hear words going over my head. I want you to just tell me like it sure. is in plain talk, right? You're going to do that. Absolutely. Folks. And okay. the first 10, the first 10 callers right now, now no one is there right now, right. but if you put down, I'm called, the first 10 callers, we're going to do it for free. Nice. Uh, or I should say complimentary. Free sounds bad. We're going to do it complimentary. It's normally $349, <laughs> so oh. we're hey, going to do it complimentary. Complimentary or free sound great to yes. me. I like that. Zero <laughs> so dollars. Give us a call. We'd we'll be happy to help out with your portfolio stress test. Okay, Linda's on the phone. I want to get to Okay. Linda. Linda, thank you for being with us tonight. Go ahead with your question. Yes, my question is, I'm 63 years old, and the last quarter, when, after I received my uh, 401k, I had lost $3,000, and I'm supposed to be in the safe zone, Ooh. like, no, nothing that's really high stress. Okay. So how did that happen? <laughs> he, yes. yeah. Here's what... Uh, Here's what happens, and here's what happened, I think, with you, Linda, is um, a couple things. We want to go back and look at what all of our choices are inside the 401k. So it is supposed to be safe, but one of the things that happened in your question, Linda, may have opened Pandora's box, and you might have just been calling to say, John, I just want you to tell me where to put it. But let me give you a little bit more information so you know and everybody else knows what's happening. We used to think that bonds were safe. Mm -hmm. Bonds are just an asset class. And so when you're looking at safety inside of your 401k, advisors and 401k companies will call some safety something that I would call safety. For example, I have clients that sit down and I say, describe safe to me. And they say, John, when I push this statement across the table, Whatever that number says, I don't want it to go below that number. Right. That is safe. Yes. Inside your 401k, Linda, we don't have those options uh, unless you go into the cash money market account, which is going to pay you about a tenth of a percent. Um, so bonds historically were thought of in our heads mm -hmm. as safe. They're basically just another asset class. We can lose money with stocks and we can lose money with bonds. Um, it may be just a matter of looking at what some of your safe options are or if you do investing outside of the 401k, make sure that money is 100% safe and you still have a little bit of risk inside your 401k. Hey, this brings up something that we were talking about in the break since Linda said that she's, I think, 63. The in-service distribution, is that what you called it? Yes, okay. yes, yes. How Good would point. that work? Would that okay. be helpful? Yes, it, uh, I think it would be. Woohoo! Yay yeah. for me! See, I'm paying attention. <laughs> Go carry, I like it. <laughs> um, are you familiar with that term, Linda, in-service distribution? No, I'm not. Okay. If you are 59 and a half, which you qualify, most employer plans allow you to do something called an in-service distribution, which means you can roll the money out of your 401k plan and still maintain your existing 401k. Let me say it again, because that sounded kind of confusing. Right. We can take the money out of the plan that it's in now, put it someplace else, so you can have the universal choice, um, all different kinds of funds, different you know, CDs, there could be annuities, there could be safe vehicles. Uh, still maintain your 401k contributions just the way that you are now, except your balance would not be the same. So we could take the balance out, put it someplace else. And this is if you are still working. Yes. Over 59 and a half. Yes. 
And is there a limit on how much you can do with each withdrawal? No, typically it's 100 percent. Okay. So they can do 100 percent. Now they can do less. Right. They can do 50. You can do whatever you'd like. But yeah. Okay. So an option there. Linda, have we helped you out a little bit? Do you have any any other follow up questions? Yes, I have one more question. Sure. If uh, after I retire and I'm still contributing to my 401k, does your employer still contribute or not at that time? All right. Let me make sure I understand. So are you, you, if you retire. Uh-huh. And are you, so you're not working? Uh-huh, when I retire. When, when you retire. When she's retired, okay. yeah, when she does. Yes, no, they will not make any more contributions <laughs> to your 401k plan. Okay. No, so when you retire, that's, that's, that's it. what you have to do. And another big thing that we see, um, and this was one of the, the large issues we had at the start of the show that I don't, I don't think I mentioned, the 401k plan is not designed to generate income. So, Linda, we've got to look and say, how are you going to pull income off of this? Because at 63, you're at a different phase than people who, than Carrie. Carrie is in the accumulation phase. Mm -hmm. Linda, you're in the distribution phase. So anybody above 58, probably 55, 60, needs to start thinking about how we're going to distribute this money no longer accumulate it because we don't have the time to recover from the losses. Right, right. Linda, best of luck to you. We hope that you, uh, you can make some of that money back, a lot of that money back, um, and, and best of luck to you in the future. Thanks for being a part of the show. Thank you. Let's talk about the difference between a 401k and a Roth 401k. Okay. Roth IRA 401k. Is that the proper terms? Both. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the answer 401k. Is yes. Give me. Give me the how it all works first. Okay. Tax wise. 401k is going to come out pre-tax. Mm -hmm. And I did think of my math problem. Yes, and this is easy. I, I, I checked it during the commercial break. We can go with so this one. It's not as hard as I thought, no. but it certainly wasn't coming out the way that yeah. I was thinking about it. When you're taking money out of your paycheck, mm -hmm. people think, oh my gosh, I can't take all this money out of yeah. my paycheck. If you pull out, for example, because it's going to come out pre-tax. So let's say you're going to pull out $100. In your take-home pay, that might only feel like $75 because it's it's pre-tax. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get the benefit of having that money go and be $100 because you haven't paid tax on it. So in a 401k or a traditional IRA, and I'm going to tie this to a Roth in a second, the 401k, the traditional IRA, you get a pre-tax benefit. So all the money goes in before you pay tax. It grows tax deferred. When you start to withdraw that money out, it is all taxable. So when I start withdrawing at the age of, let's say, you have to withdraw at 70 and a half, right? Correct. I told you, I did my reading. Uh, 70 and a half, you have yes. to start with your withdrawals if you haven't already. Yes. That's when it's taxed, and who knows what taxes will be at that point. Correct. Could be better, could not be better. I am betting not. 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 <laughs> probably not. Not with where we are now, it's probably, we are, and people think that we're paying a lot of tax. Now, yeah. if you look at historically, we're at historically low tax rates. Wow. Based upon, I mean, cool. there's, there's times in the <laughs> 70s, it was, you know, 80%. Now, there was more loopholes. But, yeah, taxes really play a, a huge impact. So, um, we don't know what the tax bracket's going right. to be in the future. So, some people are choosing to do this Roth option. Mm -hmm. Now, you can have a Roth IRA or a traditional IRA, and you can have a Roth 401k if the company offers it, uh, or traditional 401k. And what the Roth does is you put money in after tax. So now if you're putting that $100 in, it's going to feel like $100. Like mm -hmm. But that money grows tax-free and comes out tax-free. So you kind of know what the deal is up front, basically, tax-wise. Yes. You're paying it right away. Yeah, and, you're, and you're done paying it. Yeah. So all that growth, you never pay tax on it. So that is a, a common question that I get is, mm -hmm. um, you know, should I contribute to the Roth? Should I not have the Roth? And another big one is, should we convert to a Roth? Can if, you do that freely? I mean, yeah. how does, okay. Mm -hmm. Freely is a... Well, a relative term, <laughs> isn't it? A relative it? term. <laughs> we have the option to do it, yes, whenever you like. The problem is when you do it, the year in which you do it, all that money becomes taxable. Aha, uh -huh. so that can greatly affect yeah. your overall taxes for that year. Yes. Depending on how much you have. Yeah. yeah. But if you plan it with... Uh, your income and mm -hmm. what's happening. So maybe you're going to retire at 63 um, and you aren't going to have any earned income in that year. Well, that may be a year to convert to a Roth because mm -hmm. it'll just be anything that comes out of a tra traditional mm -hmm. will be taxed 100% or it goes into your tax bracket 100%. So if you converted $50,000 from your 401k to a Roth, mm -hmm. you have to pay tax on that $50,000. So you can do it strategically. You just have to look and see 
you need to talk some to it shouldn't be a willy-nilly decision oh no no yeah 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 okay another thing you brought up and uh, that I read about all these hidden fees yes. and I thought it was just plain and clear when they sent me my statement saying this is you know what you've made this is how much you put in this is your loss this is your gain hidden yeah. fees there's, what? there's hidden what and they're getting better about disclosing them but there's still fees inside there um, one of the big ones we see is with uh, smaller employers. Um, they actually will pass on the management fee to the employees. So, and there's all different plans inside, you know, the 401k uh, or options mm -hmm. I should say inside the 401k. But, and you can pick different funds, some of which are managed and some of which are index funds. And so now, I'm starting to see a greater trend move towards some of these index funds because when you buy an index, you're basically buying into the whole index, whether it's the S&P, whether it's you know the Dow, whatever the index might be, you're buying into that index. Well, it's not managed, so the fees typically are about 20 basis, uh, a quarter of a percent. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to say 25 basis points, but that would that's sure. Yeah, that would be. That's not my talk. <laughs> it's a quarter of a percent, <laughs> so <laughs> that that you can live with. But yeah. some of the managed portfolios and, and, and both are good in different places if you have an active money manager they may be charging you one and a half percent and if the advisor then is charging you a fee of one percent the employer oftentimes is passing that on directly mm -hmm. to you so you're getting hit with all the fees not knowing gotcha so, yeah when your account goes down you look and go well it's Whoa. not only going down because of the market it's going down because of the fees all coming out yeah. okay we're gonna take a quick break this is a great time to jump on the lines we have a couple open 615-737 plus that is 7587 give us a call right now if you have questions about 401ks Roths or IRAs we will be right back <laughs> 